Oh, very nice of you to join us on this rainy day. Today we've got a very good video for you and of course today we'll be talking about five tips to get you started as a beekeeper naturally. So without further ado, let's break right into it. Good afternoon beekeepers and bee enthusiasts. How are you doing? It's another great day at the farm and we're getting kind of rained on right now, but we've got a really good video plan for you today. And of course we'll be talking about the five tips to get you ready to become a beekeeper, okay? So these are five things, and if you're looking to become a beekeeper, you know, these are some really essential tips that will really help you get started and get you on the right path. And it should be a good video. We're gonna have a real good time. Let's go ahead and head inside real quick where it's not so wet and talk about our first tip. Okay, so let's break right into it. So the first thing you need to know, the first tip, to starting beekeeping naturally is of course do your homework. Now, I know people think, well, obviously it was, but no, seriously, you are handling a creature that is very vital to our way of life and very important for the environment. And so you need to take it seriously. You need to make sure you know what you're doing before you get started in this. So you need to do your homework. So what are some things we can look at, you know, to help us get started? Well, I know I've recommended it a thousand times before, but I'm going to say it again. This book, Keeping Bees with a Smile by Federal Zutin, is an excellent way to get started in natural beekeeping. Um, you know, we were doing things wrong for so long in beekeeping. We failed for so many years, but it wasn't until we found this book and we really dived into it that it just totally changed what we were doing as beekeepers, and we finally found success. And I'm not much of a reader myself. I don't really read that many books, unfortunately. Um, but this book had me hooked pretty much the whole way. I mean, I was, I really love this book and I love to read it. There's just so much good information in here and so much information that, you know, you can learn even after having read it several times. So, you know, this book is very important. And if you are going to get started in beekeeping, I highly recommend this book. Now, other places you can go, um, you know, Dr. Leo has a website called horizontalhive.com. He's got a lot of good information on there. A lot of good information about getting started as a beekeeper. He's got information, free plans on how you can build your own hives if you want to save some money. Um, and so it's just really good info. Um, he's got some cool stuff you can purchase too. It, it's a lot of good stuff on there. Um, but he's got a lot of good information for starter beekeepers. And when we were learning how to catch swarms, we used a lot of information he had on that website for catching swarms as far as how to catch the swarms or um, you know how to build a swarm hive for the bees to move into. So that website was very important. So check out horizontalhive.com uh, for that. And then also, you know, you can look at our playlist and our old videos. You know, we have videos dating all the way back to 2019 when we first started as natural beekeepers. So you can kind of see a few hiccups we make here and there and, and whatnot, but we definitely learn over time. So you can learn through those videos as well. So in any case, first tip, make sure you do your homework, get out there, do your research because is a pretty big thing to get into beekeeping and you know it's not overly difficult but you just want to make sure you know what you're doing when you get started okay so it's time for tip number two know your swarm season and plan accordingly so this is going to kind of lead into tip number three but for tip number two we need to know our swarm season now what is the swarm season of course you know after we've done some research we know that you know Every season, basically, honeybees have a time whenever they start to swarm where the colony will split in half or split into a third or so. They will leave the hive and they will go search for a new home. Now, if we know the swarm season when this occurs, then we can start putting swarm hives up in trees and whatnot, and we can try to catch those swarms that leave. So it's really important information for you to know. Now, here in the mountains of North Carolina, our swarm season is from about, I'd say, mid-April to late May. And then we'll still get some swarms after that, but that's when most of them occur. So we will plan accordingly before those swarms and basically get all of our stuff ready and get ready to catch them. So what you can do is you can talk to local beekeepers in your area and they'll be happy to let you know when the swarm season is so you can start planning a few months in advance, get all your swarm equipment, get all the good stuff, and you can start getting ready to catch those swarms. Okay, time for tip number three. Go out and catch swarms. Now, you probably saw that coming from the previous step, but in any case, it's time for us to go catch swarms. Now, why is it so important to catch swarms? We know that through catching swarms, we are getting local honeybees, which is the healthiest bees you can find for your apiary, okay? You will never find healthier bees from another state or so away. You won't find healthy bees in a package of bees that have high failure rates and whatnot. 
the healthiest bees you're going to find are swarms that you catch up in trees like this. So it's very important for you to go out there and try to catch swarms. So you know your swarm season from the previous tip. So now's the time to get your swarm box up in a tree and basically let it sit during the swarm season and try to catch those bees. Now we've got some really good videos on this material that you can look at. Um, we've got two playlists. One is the Swarm Catcher's Guide. The other is the Natural Beekeeping Swarm Catching Tips. Those two playlists, if you check them out, it's got all kinds of videos of us catching swarms and giving advice for catching swarms. And it's a really good playlist if you're interested in looking how to catch swarms. But catching swarms, we're going to get the, the best bees that way. They're always going to have the highest success rates. And so catching swarms is really important. So for tip number three, make sure you go out there and catch some swarms. Okay, time for tip number four, house those honeybees. So after you've caught your swarm, you've actually landed a swarm, what you will do is you will let them sit for a few weeks. Generally, we say at least three weeks. Let them sit on those frames, and when you're finally ready, you're gonna move them from the tree down to a nice main hive. Now, I've said this before, you wanna, tr it's, it's, a lot, it's more ideal if the main hive is within 30 feet of the tree you catch your bees from, because that way, whenever the, the foragers come home and the hive's gone, they'll, they'll know how to find the new home if it's like right beside where their old location used to be. Versus if you move it like a thousand feet away or so, um, it, could be a, it could be a lot harder for them to find their new home. So in any case, once you've had them for a few weeks, get them moved to a hive. There's several different ways you can get hives. You can purchase them. Um, if you go to horizontalhive.com, there Dr. Leo has plans where you can learn how to build hives. So there's all kinds of stuff you can, you can do. Um, I think it goes without saying that whatever frame setting you're using for your swarm hive, like if you're using a land swarm hive, you obviously want to be using a land's main hive because the frames are similar. And same if you're using a Langstroth deep in your swarm, uh, you want to use a Langstroth hive at the bottom. But in any case, get those bees moved down. It's, it's a really simple procedure. You've seen me do it in quite a few videos. Uh, the recent video we just did showed me moving a, uh, a colony down from a tree and moving them into a nice main hive. So it's, it's, it's really not that complicated, but get those bees housed, get them into a new spot and they'll be good to go. Okay, so for tip number five, this is the final tip to getting started as a beekeeper naturally. The final tip is to observe. So a lot of you, whenever you get your bees moved down and you get them into a new hive and they're ready to go, a lot of people are going to want to get into their bee hives, you know, inspect the bees over and over and over again, you know, bother them a lot. And it's, it's really not healthy for the bees. Really the best thing you can do is just leave them alone. And you can learn a lot from them by just sitting back and watching seeing what they do you know it's a rainy day today so this hive's not too active but they are a little active but i can tell a lot about how this hive's doing just by looking at the front so you know the best thing i could tell you a really good tip is just observe your bees you know don't be afraid to just be a lazy beekeeper and watch what they do and you know you'll you'll find that when you're working less and you're kind of just watching them from afar you end up enjoying beekeeping a lot more i know i have because the first six years we had bees, we did it the traditional way and we worked our butts off. Um, and now we just kind of enjoy it. So, but in any case, uh, that's the final tip and just try to observe your bees. So there you go. There's five tips to get you started as a beekeeper naturally. And you know, those five tips they are, I know they're kind of simple, but at the same time, those are five really essential things to getting started as a beekeeper, especially in the sustainable manner. And if you follow those tips, they'll, they'll really get you on the right path. Now there's, there's a lot more to learn. There's a lot more you gotta do. Again, doing your homework will really help you uh, get pretty far. Um, but in any case, follow those five tips and they'll get you started, no problem. We hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, we'll see you soon.